Hello again, everybody. Um, here to talk today about Civic Commons. Um, I want to start with a little story. So I, I started um, my life in the public sector uh, pretty much a year ago. Uh, actually, at this very event, uh, I would call this the sort of kickoff to it. Um, and it was interesting to me because it was a conference filled with government employees and, and private sector individuals who were all incredibly motivated by a single purpose to uh, really share things and see better, more open, and more transparent government. Now, um, over the past year, uh, I've had a, um, a number of conversations with my uh, fellow uh, colleagues, CIOs and CTOs on the national, state, and local level, and I've consistently heard exactly the same thing which is that we're all working on the same project. Some people uh, might be doing it a little bit ahead of each other. Some people might be doing it a little be behind each other. But at the end of the day, we're all doing the same stuff. Now, this might be something simple, like a geocoder. So San Francisco and DC are two good examples. We've been developing our own for years. Um, or something extremely complex, like a Medicaid management information system, or MMIS system. This is something that's required in 56 states and territories. Costs, on average, 100 million a pop. Uh, ours in DC, we, we put it in place a couple of years ago, cost about 50 million. California just implemented one, cost them over $1.6 billion. Okay, so we're spending a ton of money. We're reinventing the wheel over and over and over again. And, um, you know, we need to figure out a way to solve this problem. Now, there's a potentially simple solution, right? Um, to put it into a question, why don't governments just get together, share code and resources, and, uh, you know, try to do things more efficiently? Well, it, it turns out that it's actually a bit more complex than that. And there are a few reasons why. Number one, it's not easy to match up needs across governments. Um, uh, the, the common needs are hard to actually find if you're not able to talk in a really efficient manner. Uh, secondly, finding, vetting, and procuring technology um, between different jurisdictions is actually very complex. There are many challenges there. Um, work and expertise that are required to generalize and share the projects are hard to find and hard to fund. And implementation, support, and maintenance resources are also hard to find, and they often can be very costly for many projects. Um, importantly also, it turns out that incentives are often incorrectly set to allow the sharing to happen effectively. For example, um, there are federal regulations in place right now that prevent uh, effectively prevent states from sharing technology because take one of these really expensive systems, if they do it cheaper, they're not eligible for as many federal dollars as they were before. So we need to fix these incentives as well. It's, it's pretty clear that there's an important opportunity here um, and that there are challenges. So how do we do this? Well, uh, we're here today to introduce the beginnings of a solution, what we're calling Civic Commons. And we're addressing the issue of helping governments collaborate on technology. Uh, in order to do this, we're going to break it down into four main areas. Number one, what to give. We need to solve the problem of people and governments working in isolation. This means a number of different things. Uh, we need to catalog all of the needs for what we're calling the civic stack of software, uh, or in other words, identifying all of the common um, needs across agencies and different jurisdictions. Uh, we also need to catalog the projects and the products that can meet these needs. And this includes both open source and proprietary software. Open source is not you know, the full panacea that, um, that many people think it is. Um, secondly, um, how to give. Uh, we need to provide a framework for people to get resources into the commons. And that's not just code. Uh, the actual products themselves are literally just one piece of the puzzle. Uh, we also need documentation, we need business analysis, we need ROI calculators, we need case studies, uh, we need designers, user experience experts, we need uh, people with le legal expertise, and much, much more. Third, what to use and how to get it. The process of selecting and procuring uh, technology in government can be, to say the least, uh, very tricky. Um, it's difficult to vet some of the technology options that exist out there. Um, if we can do this transparently, uh, I think we're going to be able to uh, nurture a, um, a really uh, set of promising applications into this dynamic marketplace and really promote some significant innovation. Uh, additionally, model RFPs, uh, jurisdiction approved useful and simple legal documents, uh, are all going to make the technology selection and procurement much easier and faster. And if any of you out here, and I suspect many of you have been involved in a government procurement, you pretty much know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, finally, how to implement and maintain. Uh, the selection and procurement 
of technology is obviously only half the story. Uh, the other half is going to be implementation and, su and support. So shared configurations, project plans, lessons learned, documentation. All of this is going to help speed and reduce the risk and um, uh, uh, make, that, make technology implementations happen much, much better. And then hopefully support organizations are going to spring up to really help implement and maintain uh, the components of this stack at a much, much lower cost than are currently available. Uh, and then finally, on the macro level, I think we need to work on existing legislation to make all of this work seamlessly across jurisdictions. So if, you, if this sounds like a pipe dream, it's not. It's already happening. Uh, on the smaller side, many of you already know about the Open 311 API project that uh, was created by DC and San Francisco and actually nurtured to fruition by Open Plans. Uh, coolest thing about this is that it's actually spawned a number of companies, actual real jobs being put into the economy for people who are developing products that can be used across jurisdictions. Uh, on the bigger side, Minnesota uh, recently spent over $50 million to implement a new unemployment insurance system. It took them from 2002 to 2007, but they gave it to Iowa, and Iowa implemented it for less than half that cost. So this stuff is happening. And then on the support and implementation side, um, organizations like our nonprofit partner, Open Plans, have formed. And I'd like to introduce Nick Grossman now to, uh, he's the director of Civic Works for Open Plans, to talk a little bit about uh, what they're doing in some more detail. Thanks, Brian. Um, uh, the big idea uh, that we came to when we started thinking about Civic Commons was the importance of a third party organization to assist with this kind of collaboration uh, among agencies. Uh, the kinds of uh, collaboration examples that Brian mentioned are really great, and uh, we wanted to uh, find a way to strengthen those and build upon them and bring those opportunities uh, to a broader audience. Um, so drawing on uh, some of our recent experience at Open Plans, uh, I'll uh, get at a few of the ways in which we think a, an independent third party organization um, is in the right position uh, to help make this kind of collaboration possible. Uh, first is sustaining and catalyzing uh, collaborative efforts. Brian mentioned Open 3 on 1. Uh, that was an effort among uh, many cities and other organizations uh, to build a standard open API for 3 on 1 services. Um, there were a lot of organizations involved, and our role in Open Plans was to help keep up the energy um, and uh, to add resources and to coordinate efforts. Um, and that's the kind of role we expect Civic Commons to play on future projects. Uh, now there are two cities online with uh, open through on one DC and San Francisco, and there are more uh, on the way. Uh, we also uh, see building uh, sustainable knowledge resources as an important part of a, uh, a important role that a, a third party uh, organization like Civic Commons will play in the development and the sustain, uh, sustenance of the civic stack. Um, uh, OpenMuni.org is a resource that uh, Open Plans, Code for America, and many others have contributed to over the past year uh, to help catalog. Uh, things like open data policies, uh, good examples of, uh, of open source uh, software packages for certain uses, and so on. Um, and we expect Civic Commons to continue to develop these resources uh, as a core part of their activities. Um, and then the last area where uh, we really see the important role of an independent organization like Civic Commons is not just to do work directly, but to create an environment where, uh, where we can leverage the involvement and investment of many other organizations that will form the, the sort of ecosystem around uh, the commons of, of open civic code. Um, there are a lot of important roles that need to be played, such as uh, collaboratively, uh, setting up a collaborative development process uh, in the first place, uh, promoting open source projects uh, once, once they get to maturity, um, and providing enterprise support uh, to those governments so that, they can, uh, so that there's someone who really stands uh, behind those products. And organizations like Code for America and us and Red Hat and many others are already playing, uh, are playing these roles, and we hope that Civic Commons will uh, highlight those activities and uh, create a, a, a way for, uh, for everybody's efforts to be, uh, to be brought together. Um, so uh, really, uh, we uh, want to not just be uh, one party uh, uh, building, building resources for open civic code, but we want to help uh, build uh, the sustainable ecosystem of organizations around this important issue. Right. <clears throat> Thanks, Nick. Uh, get that clicker. Yep. Thanks. Um, so there um, are three uh, founding organizations involved here, and actually uh, one of my favorite phrases that's been brought up by the team so far is, uh, it takes a village of villages, which in this case is very, very true. Um, so far, it's been um, our agency, um, the DC Office of the Chief Technology Officer, um, obviously uh, Code for America, which is 
uh, the organization most of you know about, you'll be hearing about later, but a phenomenal group that is really helping to put all of this stuff together, not just here in DC, not for this project, but for um, four other cities across the country in this first tranche. Um, and uh, one of the nice things about this platform that we're creating is that it's going to be the repository for the other applications being created through the Code for America uh, project. Uh, and then Open Plans, who you've just met, we have a number of supporters. Uh, the White House, uh, the Obama administration is fully behind this. Uh, National Association of Government Webmasters, O'Reilly, uh, the Open Source for America Foundation. Um, and then six cities have committed support so far. Uh, Seattle, LA, Boston, Chicago. Uh, and New York, um, and there are many, many more, to, oh, in San Francisco, and there are many more to come. Um, we are working with lots of different organizations that exist right now to make sure that they're aware of the project and that they're willing to back it. Um, the other cool thing is that there are a number of already committed projects for this. Uh, one of the ones I'm real excited about is the Federal IT Dashboard. Uh, Vivek um, has uh, graciously uh, given this code and this project to Civic Commons. Um, we'll now be able to uh, generalize it, put it into the framework, and anybody out there can download and use this in any jurisdiction uh, and improve it. Um, you know, that's the great thing about this, uh, this project. Um, we've got the um, operational dashboard that my agency set up, Track DC, uh, San Francisco's master address database, their geocoder, the Open 311 API, obviously, the New York State Senate's open legislation uh, application. So we've got a lot of stuff that's in there, a lot of stuff to come. Um, the real goal here is to incubate this organization such that one year from now, we have an independent, thriving organization. Um, starting on October 1st, we're going to seed the commons with these projects that I've mentioned. Um, in February, um, the Code for America fellows arrive in DC and start helping us to build this. And then during the year, we're really going to be focusing on not just administration, but really outreach, communication, collaboration, everything that we need to get this into a self-sustaining mode so that uh, when the CFA year is up, we've got something that is accepted, adopted, and running on its own two feet. A um, number of ways that you can help. Go to civiccommons.com, sign up. Um, we want you to participate, we want to know who you are, and anybody who's out there that can sign up for this is fantastic. Join the online discussion around all the technologies and the issues that I've talked about, uh, and that Nick's talked about today. Um, let us know about your code. Um, this will help to identify and nurture the most promising civic projects out there. And then finally, help us build the catalog and the knowledge base. This is where this stuff is really going to work. Uh, finally, uh, just a number of thank yous. A um, number of people have helped through inspiration, through perspiration, to kind of make this thing a reality from the, the germ of an idea stage to where it is right now. I just want to call out one group. Um, uh, the, um, uh, we want to thank, who was it? Uh, Civic Actions. Civic Actions, thank you. To who actually provided us with the URL civiccommons.com. Uh, it was a, a magnanimous gesture. It took no convincing at all. We asked them, they gave it. It was fantastic. Um, so thank you guys all very much. Uh, appreciate it. If you have any questions, feel free to find us later. And I uh, appreciate you listening. All right. I took it off the slide. Hey, thanks a lot, Brian and Nick.